Hello and welcome from inside my kitchen cupboard. I'm having my first hot chocolate of the season in this, this is Tarn. This is my fourth wing mug and I'm living for this. <laughs> and then I'm also having a pumpkin spice brioche bread. So you know it's giving fall vlog. So this is what I'm reading. It's The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. I actually had seen this book and put it on my TBR when it was on Amazon as an independently published book, hence the cover. Um, but I didn't buy it then. Then it got taken off of Amazon and when I went to buy it, it wasn't there anymore and I was upset. But that's because it was getting published, published. Um, like published by a publishing house so anyways true to like just the original want for this book and I wanted this original cover I got the original one off of some random human on the internet and that was a useless story I don't know why you needed that story the point is that's why I have a different cover and um this is about there's essentially six magical people and they are potentially being initiated into the Alexandrian society, uh, which is like super secret, like only the top magicians in the world, or I think they call them something else with an M. I can't remember. Oh, um, no, that says mysteriously. I don't know some word with an m that means people who do magic and are intellectuals clearly not me <laughs> anyway so the there's five of them can be initiated but six of them have been chosen to go through the initiation that means that one of them must be eliminated da, da, da. and that's the t uh i think i'm like halfway through i never realized though that there were like these pictures in the book so cool i'm like halfway through and I, i'm not gonna lie to you i was having a hard time in the beginning it was rough i couldn't get into it um i just like i'm reading it and nothing was processing in my brain and i don't know what it is i woke up this morning early i did some running and i feel like that just watched took the fog <laughs> out of my brain sickle <laughs> so uh finally the book is making sense I don't know if it's the book or the run but it is what it is you get what you give I cannot see heaven being much better than this okay that's why I have my headphones in because I have the audiobook and I'm going to listen to the audiobook while I enjoy my brekkie so y'all on the flip side i am so beyond tired it's not even funny i went to go get my nails done and it's only like eight o'clock but i did wake up at four o'clock in the morning today so it makes sense that i'm tired I'm just going to embrace my grandma era because if I don't wake up at 4, I mean, I wake up at 4 and I still feel like I'm rushing. So, you know, we just have to wake up at 4. Anyways, I am two chapters away from finishing The Atlas Six. I just, I don't know what to say. I don't have any real thoughts on this book. I feel like when I read Alone With You in the Ether, it's kind of what I felt like with this book too. Like I felt like I wasn't smart enough. I'm not smart enough to understand Avi Blake's <laughs> work. And I mean, I'm smart, okay? Don't get me wrong. It's just, it's very like intellectual and complex. 
I did really, really, really love Alone With You in the Ether, though, even though I'm pretty sure half of it went over my head. Still love that book. The Alice Six has been interesting. There's just, like, something, a little je ne sais quoi, missing, so... Anyways, unless I have nothing else to read, which is highly unlikely because my TBR is literally enough for like three lifetimes, I probably will not finish this series, which is fine because I don't think that there's matching books for this cover. So, you know, I'm just saving some points. Girl math. So I'm probably, as soon as I stop filming this, going to finish... The Atlas 6, or I can finish Crimson Moth by Kristen Siccarelli. Is that how you say her name? I'm going to assume that means Siccarelli. I actually, my mind, <laughs> my mind was blown, okay? Um, I was so confused because I was trying to put this into my Goodreads and it would not come up. Like, I'm typing in the Crimson Moth. And I just keep getting the Heartless Hunter. I could not understand for the life of me why. Then I realized the Heartless Hunter is part of the Crimson Moth series. So I was like, okay, that's why it keeps coming up. Like, how do I find this book? Then I read the description for the Heartless Hunter. Because I had seen the cover on Book of the Month. And I was like, let me see what the hype is about. Everyone's been talking about this book. Boom, it's a description to this book. So it turns out that, I guess, the UK version of this book, it's called The Crimson Moth. The US edition is called The Heartless Hunter, which I just don't see how The Heartless Hunter matches, but okay, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, that makes a lot more sense because now when I want to read the second book, The Rebel Witch, it makes sense that it goes with the heartless hunter though anyways this is like just a beautiful beautiful fairy loot edition of the book look at oil insane in the membrane and i also think there's a alternate there's an alternate cover in here But I've ruined this, which is insane because I haven't taken it anywhere. It's just been waiting at home. This is also beautiful. What I've been looking at. All right. Anyway, so this book, I am honestly almost done. I think I have like four chapters or something like that. But like the chapters go by so fast. Like the font is. That's one chapter ginormous um this book is about a witch also known as the crimson moth which kind of makes it feel like a super villainy name but that's not the vibes that you get from this book at all which made me kind of sad but that's okay <laughs> um so the crimson moth she lives in the new republic where witches used to rule but then they were overturned and uh now basically being a witch is illegal and so if you're a witch you get purged you get unalived anyway so the crimson moth she frees witches that were captured and are about to get purged before they get purged uh and so as a crimson moth she goes into this plan to get with gideon gideon is like the head the captain of the blood guards he's leading the witch hunt she wants to get with him to get intel to help her save witches and then gideon the blood guard wants to get with her because he suspects her of either being or knowing who the crimson moth is because she got a lot of monies and also i don't know why else it's weird that he suspects her now that i'm thinking about it 
anyways whatever the book itself is fine at first i didn't think i was gonna like it because the writing style felt a little juvenile to me but the storyline actually got a little bit interesting to the point where like i didn't really care what the writing was like so that's fun and new and exciting and um honestly i don't know that i really care much for the book like it's fine it's good it's kind of interesting but I really am just stuck on the fact that in order, like this magic system, <laughs> in order for the witches to do magic, they need blood. So they take the blood and they make a symbol with the blood and depending on what the symbol is, boom, chakalaka, you get the spell. Except that if um depending on what kind of spell you want to do you might need either fresh blood you might need your own blood you might need someone else's blood and then there's also like different categories too where like you get the blood unwillingly from someone else for certain spells or you get the blood willingly for certain spells and they all have names i'm not going to get into it but the one part that really has me stuck here okay is that the crimson moth right like she is opposed to unaliving people and stuff so where is she gonna get blood she's a woman right and every month do i have to say it i don't want to say it just know every month she gets a new supply of blood from herself And from her friend, Verity, too, which is even more gross, especially given that you have to, like, draw with the blood. <sighs> All right. I'm going to finish the book. I'm going to get some slippery sleep. And then I'm going to wake up early to make some chili to take to work for lunch. Hey friends, same day. It is uh, the 1st of October. Happy spooky season! <laughs> I just made my first chili of the year. It came out really good, if I do say so myself. Feeling nice and cozy. The air is crisp. Um, I have lots of reading updates, actually. First day of the month. I've already finished my first and second book of the month i breezed through these on the bus and the train uh to and from work which is why i didn't really have time to update but we'll see how this works now that i'm working you know anyways the alice six i know i said i wasn't gonna finish the rest of the series but then the end of it kind of got good and i am kind of interested to see what the rest will be like so as soon as i finish my physical tbr we'll see about the rest of the series because i actually got kind of interested now it kind of took like a turn that i wasn't expecting and that kind of didn't really have anything to do with like the rest of the book but kind of did and that seems like a good time to me so i ended up giving this three stars i will be continuing the series if the ending had been a larger part of the story this probably would have been a four star book for me so i have hope that the rest of the series will maybe be better i was just looking for the pictures because it's interesting yeah i have like 13 books on my physical tbr that i need to read before i buy any other books um 14 14 books on my physical tbr so we'll see how many of those i can get accomplished in this week uh speaking of i didn't include these two in that count by the way um but i also finished the crimson moth this one i only was physically reading i also realized i think i said this yesterday or earlier that this is heartless hunter uh anyways this book i 
I can't explain and I'm a little embarrassed to say that I actually enjoyed this because I can't explain why but given the ending I would say the ending was pretty conclusive to the actual story however it does lend itself to the beginning of a new story so I would be interested to read the second book obviously since I have this edition of it I will probably wait until they come out with this edition of the second book but I think it's coming out in like February or something real soon like that if it comes out on book of the month then maybe I'll get it but I know that they're gonna come out with the second one because they do this thing right here where they put like book number one and then the second one will have book two so that's just a random thought train that I'm going down all right so I finished those two books and then I started oh and I ended up giving the crimson moth a four star I think it's more closer to like a three and a half but I'm gonna round up to a four star because I felt like I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would okay I started this book when I was done with the crimson moth because I had it on my Libby and it's all that was available so the Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. I don't know a lot about this. I think it's like this famous author who's like retired. He says, I'm not going to write any more books. And then boom, chakalaka, he writes a new book. And everyone wants to get their hands on it because he's super famous or whatever. And he holds a competition and says, there's only one copy of this book. And whoever wins can be the person to have it. From what I gathered in the beginning of the book, the main character in this book, or at least, I, I've only read like one chapter, at least one of the people in the running to win this copy of the book is a like down on her luck, doesn't have a lot of money, teaching aide who is trying to collect the funds to prove to a uh, adoption agency that she can adopt one of the kids in her school and so I think this is like a big opportunity for them to be able to win this book and potentially like change their lives I don't know I don't know how the two things connect I'm only one chapter in but so far it's pretty interesting I'm interested to hear and see a lot more about like the fictional world slash island that this famous author writes about it seems like there's excerpts of it in the book which is going to be fun and exciting and it's giving like fantasy but is it really a fantasy or is it We will find out on the next episode aka the next clip <laughs> um so that's what i started i have a habit of reading two books at a time and i am trying to figure out what my second book for the moment is gonna be and i did originally think about picking up Hera by jennifer saint but I also feel like I've done a lot of fantasy lately because I was reading the Harry Potter series. I've read a couple of those books, The Crimson Moth, The Atlas Six, The Wishing Game, and I'm feeling like I need a little bit of a change. So even though I have a feeling this book is going to be really good because I loved Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, I think I might need to switch it up. Hmm. Okay, so I looked on my bookshelf and this is the only thing that I have that's not really fantasy. This is a spooky book. I don't know if it's a thriller or like a horror book, but I'm not going to read the description. I don't remember the description when I got this book off of Book of the Month. I don't read descriptions for thrillers or like spooky books because I just need to go in blind and 
hope for the best so will i will let you know as i'm reading this what it's about or after i get past the 100 page mark then i'll read the description you know what i mean but this is an option and it looks like the chapters are really short which i could use a little quick win right now and also a book that's not like 500 pages because like geez louise i've been on a roll with the long books i'm also on book four of harry potter which is like 800 pages and like I really love those books. I've given them all like five stars, but I'm not looking forward to having to get through so much because I've just been reading a lot of long books lately. I need a quick win, you know? But I'm at that point in my TBR where you're just reading what's left. <laughs> I mean, not to say that I don't want to read these books. Like, obviously, they're on my TBR, but reading what's left. Okay. Speaking of, I should go read. I've been talking for like 17 minutes. I think I'm going to take a walk. I need a walk. I'm doing this like challenge. It's like a, a distance challenge. It's like a Harry Potter theme. And um, you like, you progress in the story of the Sorcerer's Stone. The more you walk run at like climb whatever it's like a fitness challenge and you just have to move 79 miles within the time of the challenge so i had to get at least two miles down a day in order to beat my challenge so i think i'm gonna walk and then maybe i will listen to the wishing game and we'll see what happens from there I'm resolved to the idea that I will never have good lighting in this video because I'm only filming like first thing in the morning or super late at night. Anyways, happy October 2nd. Um, I'm having a little bricky and heating up some milk for a little hot chalky. Ew, ew. It's like 5.30 in the morning. But yesterday I got some book mail that I am I was opening it and I realized why not take it out on camera so first thing I got is a special edition of Harry Potter with these like stenciled edges of the golden snitch and I don't remember purchasing this but here it is. <laughs> uh, I've kind of been in my Harry Potter era lately. I never read these books before, but I was really obsessed with the movies when uh, they were coming out when I first watched them. Why does my hair look like that? Weird. Um, anyways, uh, I had no interest in purchasing the books. It wasn't like even a thought that came in my brain, but then my friend gave them to me for my birthday So here we are and here we are getting super obsessed And that's the tea uh, Then the next thing I got is this Deluxe or exclusive edition of Wow, this is a heavy book, but Betrayed by Emily Henry. Look how pretty Ah So cute! Oh, the foil is it. Do you see that? Like the little specks in the sand. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I wonder what the... I feel overwhelmed that you exist. This is a really heavy book. Jeez Louise. Like, it doesn't look big, but it is very heavy. Anyways. Uh, and then the quote in the back says, when the world felt dark and scary, love could whisk you off to go dancing. Laughter could take some of the pain away. Beauty could punch holes in your fear. That's cute. It's a little, a little damaged, but that's all right. I am listening to 
The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer and I am obsessed with this book. Like so far, five star vibes thus far and I'm like 50% in so I have high hopes for this book and we're excited. Um, I don't know how to explain. It's just like whimsical and like the riddle person you know like those books where there's like the person that just speaks in riddles and you're like what the french toast are you saying uh there's one of those okay in the book they describe him as a combination of willy wonka alba stumbledore and jesus christ <laughs> i don't know what that means but he's kind of hilarious himself there's this one scene that it's just kind of funny because he's like, oh, there's this dude, blah, blah, blah. You might know him as Lewis Carroll. And the girl's like, yeah, I know him. And he's like, personally? And she's like, no, I've never met him. <laughs> I'm just like, what? What is this conversation like that? What is going on, sir? Please explain yourself. So anyways, like he's just like very literal. He writes children's books. He's like a children's book author. it's just it's really good it's really funny and i'm loving it uh, it's kind of dark like you get the vibes like there's something like dark in the horizon but like he's like a children's book author so it's like super like innocent and whimsical and i just i love it i love the setting like the clock island and oh what a great time i'm having <laughs> we'll check in I finished and I'm kind of mad about it also I got the paperback edition because I was loving it and I thought it was gonna be a five star and I wanted to tap some things but then I ended up just getting through it and finishing it and I'm mad about it <laughs> I bumped it to four stars I think that the beginning was really good and then I got to like part four and some of like the more emotional realistic aspects of the book started to kind of come out and I guess the thing is that I liked the book for its like whimsical, magical, little bit like unreal, like fantasy happening in the real world vibes. You know what I mean? But then we just got to like real life and I don't like real life. Why would I read a book to be in real life? Basura! So that's the tea. <laughs> I'm very disappointed. Let's see. My friend Jeanette is over. She has to work on some homework. And I'm going to read while she does her homework. So I'm going to make her pick my next read. And then I'll tell you guys what it is. I'm between the new Alison Saft book. She's the girl who wrote A Fragile Enchantment. I think it's something beneath the drowning tide beneath the drowning tide question mark or this book called long live evil stay tuned hello me again from the same angle she chose long live evil by sarah reese brennan i'm obsessed with this sprayed edge and the foil inside i don't know why i did that face like i'm a teacher right now but like the foil inside is literally insane i'm so obsessed i think the original cover of this book was like purple but one thing i like is that this book is about a book and the inside cover is the like fictional book from the story crazy concept right <laughs> so anyways uh this book is about a girl named ray and i can't remember why but she goes into the fiction like i think she's like about to die or something am i allowed to say that word on the internet anyways she gets an opportunity to go into the world uh, of this like fantasy book called 
time of iron and surprises herself because it turns out that she is the villain when she gets in there and she's like determined to change the narrative or something you know i don't know it's a fantasy book about a fantasy book and i'm excited so let's get into it hello it is saturday evening and i've just finished long live evil uh honestly this is a beautiful book and i'm gonna keep it because it is literally so gorgeous however i did not enjoy this at all <laughs> i thought that i at least understood what was going on in the beginning with like the world building and the fantasy of it and then I read a review that, like, just now when I finished, I read a review, one star review that someone put and was talking about a uh, switching of timelines. And I was like, wait, I didn't get that at all. <laughs> so maybe I missed it. Maybe it just, like, totally went over my head. Um, there were a few parts of this book that made me, like, chuckle a little bit, you know? But other than that... Um, there was nothing really that stood out about this that I like really enjoyed at all. I feel like the execution was just not really like what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like this like super funny and like granted a lot of the jokes I feel like were tailored to people in my age range like millennials but um it didn't it didn't it didn't hit like I thought it was gonna hit I'm so sad I think that I'm starting to realize that a lot of the books that um are Illumicry and Fairy Loot picks are not really my type of books which is really sad I will say that it's kind of nice um at least with Fairy Loot like they tend to pick books that really like end up trending and becoming very popular so um like for example divine rivals like that was one of their book box books and then eventually that book became really popular so i'm sure they were glad that they picked it because people were out here selling that book for like five six hundred dollars because <laughs> it was a sprayed edge edition of a very popular book anyways all of that to say fairy loot does pick like books that tend to kind of go viral um but I don't know it's kind of making me sad I am kind of thinking about giving up on my Illumicrate subscription I already gave up the romance one the afterlight because I never enjoy those romances the only like perk of it is that uh when they come out with special editions of like an Ali Hazelwood an Emily Henry or like some other author that I really like I can buy it but that's not part of the subscription it's just like an add-on that you have to purchase so it doesn't really make sense and I think I have access to those just by having my Illumicrate subscription which then makes me question if I want to cancel it uh, Anyways, I'm just thinking out loud here, but the point is, I haven't been really enjoying these Fairy Loot and Illumicrate ones. I do tend to like the Fairy Loot ones more. So, we'll see. I gave this two stars, and I think that this is a good place to end this vloggy vlog, because it is Saturday evening, so tomorrow's a new week. And I just finished the book, so that works. If you made it this far, leave an emoji that you think is the most evil emoji. <laughs> and that's all I got for you guys. I I did want to, I had plans this weekend to go away and do like the cutesy fall thing with my best friend, her husband, and my boyfriend, but um, it didn't work out. Okay, someone was sick and we had to stay home so we didn't get to do all the like cutesy falsy stuff and the only thing i'm really sad about is that i didn't get my farm fresh apple cider donuts but hopefully we will do some fall stuff in another vlog
near you. So leave that evil emoji and hit that like button if you enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe button if you want to join the family. I will see you all. I'm going to see you next.